All right, so I had some time to um, actually do some measurements on the crankshaft, the LC9. It is actually eight millimeters shorter. The LS4 cranks are eight millimeters shorter than the uh, normal LS blocks. So this is a uh, this is my crank adapter. Then this is the stock flywheel or um, ring gear. Um, basically, since we're no longer using the bolts to bolt this directly to the crank, instead this uh this bolts onto here and then these holes countersunk holes line up with that plate so this is just tackled it in place so i don't really like this um and then on top of that i don't really remember like there was a maybe an error in my measurements before or stack up or something but I ended up welding this spacer to the crank adapter too. So I'd like to redo this and I have to redo it already because the crank is uh, eight millimeters longer on a normal LS block. So I had some time to spend on the design for this. And let me minimize that flywheel. Oh hell, actually we can just do a cross section view. So this is cross section of the components. I mean, I don't have the ring gear drawn, so that would normally be like right there, but the stack up is correct for where this interface is. So this is the new crank. Sorry, let me rotate this around. I don't have a mouse, so I, to be honest, I can't remember how you get it to pan or whatever orbit correctly. So. So this is what I came up with. Um, so basically I'm gonna make this crank adapter the same as what it is, remove the spacer. Um, the spacer, believe it or not, is like exactly the same height. So I guarantee before I was looking at this model and I forgot that the LS4 crank was shorter. So that's why that spacer is probably all there. <laughs> so remove the spacer. And then what we're gonna do is gonna rework this ring gear. So cut these welds, remove this. I'm gonna call this the snout. Remove the snout, and then we're gonna mill the bore to match this bore. So this whole piece will be one piece. It'll bolt in. It'll basically get pressed in, kind of like this is now, but it'll get pressed into this bore and then you'll still have the bolts on the outside to prevent it from rotation. Um, so, and one of the other things, like the nuances with uh, the, the design I had before was that I thought that, shit, I can't remember now. Oh, it was because this stacks on top of here directly. So the clearance between yeah, I can't. I mean, I don't know how to really demonstrate it. Basically, the clearance between here to here, which is from here to here, that's that's all I had for these bolt heads to stick out. So what I we ended up doing was we took some ARP. Uh, these were out of like an LT4, I think. We took some LT4 ARP bolts and we turned them down so that the heads are actually countersunk in there, so they wouldn't be sticking out basically. So. This really sucks because this, um, if I take this, if I kept this design the way it is, right, and remove this, this cross section for material thickness between this counter bore and the back side of this plate would be very, very thin. So I want to eliminate the Audi snout whatsoever, like get rid of it, and then this will be, this will allow me to have enough space here now to fit just normal flywheel bolts on this thing. So probably gonna 3D print this thing out. Well, I don't even think I need to 3D print it. So I'll probably be making this, uh, 
this adapter here pretty soon and then hopefully get the hopefully get the uh the lifters and new oil pump and what else do i need to do swap the cam over the harmonic balancer the pulleys or the brackets for the pulleys and accessories and with the shift linkage good then there's really not too many things to wrap up I may end up taking those axles, the CVs off the axles, and just getting proper axles made. So we'll see. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, have more updates here in a couple weeks. So comment if you guys have any questions. Thank you.